Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. We are gonna be talking about palettes. Now, as a full-time makeup reviewer, I buy a lot of different palettes to test out. So I would say that I have a larger than average collection, but I've been thinking lately that there are some palettes that I never really take out and use past my initial review. And then there are other palettes that I just keep reaching for over and over again. So I thought that would be fun to talk about that today. And I'll explain my reasoning on why I don't use some of the palettes while other ones I use all the time. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start the video with the palettes that I don't really use and then we'll end on a positive note and talk about the ones that I really love. So this first one might shock you a little bit because so many people really seem to love this one and it gets really great reviews. It's the Sigma Enchanted Palette. So I actually love Sigma. They're one of my favorite brands when it comes to both brushes and eyeshadows. And when I first saw the promo photos for this, I'm just gonna put a picture up here so you can see. It looked beautiful. The colors looked right up my alley. I loved the combination of the greens and those dusty mauvey pinks. It just looked stunning. And I could see myself using every single color. But in reality, the palette is not quite what it looked like in the promo photos. Once I actually got it and I started trying to play with it, that's where I ran into trouble. So let's just take a close up look at the palette and I'll kind of walk you through my issues with it. So the first one is when it comes to the matte shades. So you notice over here, all the matte shades are very deep and dark. There's really only one transition color that I can use for my particular skin tone. If you have a deeper skin tone, this palette might work great for you. But if you're more fair to light like I am, there's just a lack of those lighter transition or crease colors that I normally like to use. Then when it comes to the shimmer shades, there are deep and smoky shimmer shades down here that I never really use. And this one over on this side, almost it doesn't seem to go with the palette. It's just kind of floating out there. It's kind of an odd color and I never know what to pair it with in this palette. So the ones that I just kept reaching for over and over were this rosy shade here and then this green topper, which is really beautiful, but it's a little bit more on the sheer side. So I didn't always want to use a topper. And then you have these two satin colors right here, which are actually beautiful shades, but the issue is that they just don't make too much of an impact. They're really kind of subtle and I usually like a little bit more sparkle. So those are the reasons that I never really reach for this palette, which is a shame because it's such a beautiful color story. I wish that they would have included some more mid-tones in here instead of everything being either really light or really dark. I wish they had some variety and middle of the road shades. The next one I got during a Black Friday sale, so I got a really good deal on it, but I still feel like it was a waste of money because I literally never use this palette, and that's the Viseart Dark Edit Palette. I was initially drawn to this color story because it reminded me a lot of the now discontinued ColourPop Good Sport Palette, but when I actually look at them side by side, Good Sport has, again, a lot more of those matte transition colors that would work better for my skin tone. I think if you have a deeper skin tone, you might really love the Viseart palette, but I just felt like the ColourPop one was a little bit more wearable for me. Dark Edit, I think, is just very deep and smoky and saturated, and there are two colors that I can kind of get away with as a transition shade, which is this light brown, and then here you have this kind of lighter olivey green, but everything else is just really kind of deep and smoky. So while I was initially really drawn to this color story, I just find that I never ever reach for it. If anything, I'll always choose the ColourPop Good Sport over this one, so I am sorry that I bought it. Next up in the Spirit of Fall palettes, we have the Tarte Maneater After Dark. This is another one that might surprise you, but I really have not reached for it since last fall when I first got it. And last year, this came out around this time of year. Everybody is crazy for fall, and I'm looking at this thinking like it's the perfect fall palette. I have to get it. And I was and I was really just impressed with the new formula so much that I didn't really stop to think about the fact that I don't really wear a lot of like reds and oranges and yellows on my eyes. I do tend to lean toward warmer tones for the fall, but there are some palettes that I just reach for way more often than this one, which I'll actually show you when I talk about the palettes that I use a lot. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I think the formula is really nice, no complaints there at all, but it's just not the palette that I reach for when I want a warm toned eye look because it's just like a little bit too warm for me. And I also feel like it just lacks some lighter shimmer shades. I have hooded eyes, I usually try to keep my lid color a bit lighter and brighter to kind of bring that area forward and make it look larger. So I rarely wear deeper shimmer shades on my lid unless I'm going for like an intentionally smoky eye. So again, love the formula. Formula. not crazy about the color story. Okay, so this next palette, I'm probably gonna have some people who disagree with me, that's okay. We can all like different things. It's the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Palette. So first of all, this is super expensive. I think I paid $129 for it. And it's basically a $129 desk ornament because I literally never use this palette. At first glance, it's beautiful. Like you would think that this color story would be right up my alley. It's very soft, neutral colors, very easy to wear. There's a gorgeous duochrome shade in here somewhere. But my issue here, and the reason that I don't use it that much is a lack of mattes. This only has has two mattes here and here. So you have this kind of dusty mauvey shade and then you have this brown. So this is a lighter shade, this is a mid-tone. Those are great, perfect crease colors, but there are no deeper mattes to kind of add depth to a look, which I normally like to do. My eyes are kind of downturned, so I like to add some depth just to the outer corner and kind of bring it up a little bit. And I had trouble doing that with this palette. I felt like every time I did a look, it was just very soft and pale, and this brown shade just didn't add the depth that I was looking for because even though it looks a little bit deeper in the pan, once you start blending it out, it's actually a pretty soft color. And of course I could just go into another palette and grab a deeper matte shade, but I think like the whole point of using a palette is just being able to pick up that one palette and just create a look with what you have. I really don't like going into other palettes. So instead of picking up this one, I'm more likely to just go and grab a palette where I can do a complete look, especially because, and this is kind of where I think I'm gonna get some disagreement, I don't think this formula is worth the price. It's a nice formula, I just don't feel like it's $129 nice. So I really haven't purchased any of her palettes in a long time because I know like how much I spent on this and how little I actually use it. So it's making me hesitate to go and buy another one, especially because I feel like her releases that come out are just starting to all look the same. But if she came out with a color story that was something a little bit more unique and different, something that I don't have in my collection, I might consider it, but I think I would just look more closely at what finishes and shades are in the palette. Can I complete a full eye look with it or not? I feel like for me, that's just really important. The fifth palette that I just never use and never reach for is the Anastasia Rose Metals palette. So this one, again, promo photos looked absolutely beautiful. I didn't think for a second that it was gonna be as dark as it actually is in real life. So getting it home, again, I was just disappointed. I felt like any look I do with this palette is gonna come out pretty deep and smoky and I'm not really a smoky eye person. Maybe on camera, I wear smoky eyes occasionally. In my daily, everyday life, no way. I'm usually wearing lighter looks, especially, again, when it comes to shimmer shades, having the hooded eyes, I feel like I need a lighter shade on my lid to bring my lids forward and make it look like there's more space there. I feel like a dark shimmer shade really closes things off. And it's also, again, a little bit more of like a smoky look. So if I'm going on camera or if I have like a big event to go to, which is like not even once a year probably, then maybe I'll do a smoky eye. Other than that, I don't. So when it comes to the matte shades in this palette, I feel like they're pretty decent. We have this one one here that I could use in my crease and this one here. Then they give you this deeper orange, like a mid-tone and then this mid-tone brown, which is also really nice. So I feel like with the mattes, I'm okay. But when it comes to the shimmer shades, they're just really dark for the most part. I found myself just using this one haze over and over again. And once in a while, I would use a little bit of this one, but this one's almost too light. It's kind of like the color that I would use for an inner corner highlight. The rest of the shimmer shades that are 
in here are just more deep and smoky. So again, I have no issues with the formula. I think pretty much all the palettes I talked about in this category, I really like the formulas. For me, it's either the color story not making sense or it lacking certain matte shades or shimmer shades that I tend to reach for often. It's really all about the mix of colors for me and whether I feel inspired or if I feel like these colors will work for my everyday life. And when it came to these palettes, they really just didn't fit the bill. So before we move on to my most used palettes, I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments what you think of the five palettes that I just talked about. Do you love them or do you feel like I do? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. So Moving on to some of the palettes that I really love and that I use all the time, I think it's gonna be pretty easy for you guys to guess what some of them are. So I'm just gonna get those out of the way because for any regular viewers of my channel, this is not gonna be a shock. So the first one would be the ColourPop Stone Cold Fox Palette. So this one, is a favorite because I'm really a huge fan of cool tones. I love the grays and the taupes that are in here. There are also some really pretty rosy tone shades as well. And yes, it is a huge palette, but it just has so much variety, so much to pick from. I really just can't go wrong with this one. If I want a neutral look, this is one of two palettes that I will just reach for every single time. It even has some warm tones kind of scattered in here too. So it's not a completely cool tone palette. It really just has all the neutrals I could ever want from light to mid-tone to deep. It has everything. So this is just one of the most versatile palettes in my collection. And I just grabbed this one when I don't have a lot of time and I don't really want to think about what look I'm going to do. It's just really easy. And the formula is really easy to use as well. They're very easy to blend. The shimmer shades are really pretty. It's just a solid palette all the way around. Then the second one that I reach for all the time as well, which you probably could have guessed, is the Doll Squad 2.0. Oh, from Doll 10. So I have not always loved Doll 10's eyeshadow formula. And if you've tried it in the past and been disappointed, I would still try this one out because they have revamped it in the last year or two. And these are, no exaggeration, some of the best formulated eyeshadows in my collection. Every single time I use this palette, I feel like my eye look comes out really nice. The matte shades have this like super soft velvety feel to them. They have nice grip to the skin in the sense that they don't just blend away, but they're also not so grippy that they're hard to blend. They're that perfect in between and the shimmer shades are so rich and creamy and they're those metallics that just kind of go on like liquid metal. They're not glittery toppers, they're not sheer. So they really pack a punch to give you a lot of color and just that beautiful shiny finish to your eyes without being being glittery. So this is really the perfect palette for when I want more of a warm tone look. It's something that I would reach for more often than these type of warm tones. These are just a little bit more my speed. They don't have like the bright reds and oranges and yellows. Again, if you love color, you'll probably love the Tarte one. This just has the most beautiful, toasty, warm tones that I just think are so wearable if you're somebody who really loves neutrals. And I also love the selection of matte shades that are in here because you have these on the top that I use a lot on the brow bone to kind of brighten things up. Then these three right here are the perfect transition colors. Then we have these beautiful mid-tones for deepening things up a little bit. Then we have the deep dark colors for the outer corner. So I find that I can just build the perfect look with this palette that just has like a nice gradient. I start out with these lighter crease colors, then I can go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and every Everything just blends together so nicely. I also feel like I can do that with the Stone Cold Fox palette just because there's so many colors in here you can really get a nice gradient going with your eye look. I think one of my pet peeves when it comes to palettes is when they have like really light mattes, really dark mattes, but nothing to kind of connect them in between and you're left with kind of like a light crease color and then a really dark one, but nothing in the middle to kind of blend the two together. So that's another thing I really love about the Doll 10 palette is that they totally have that covered. Again, when it comes to fall palettes, Another reason that I'm not always reaching for the Tarte Man Eater After Dark is because there's another fall palette that I use way more often than you would think. This might actually surprise you a little bit, but it's the Profusion Harvest palette. So this one and also the ethereal one that they have, which is also equally as beautiful, has just the perfect mix of fall colors. So as a lot of you probably know, I do love neutrals and I wear neutrals, I think, most of all. But when I wanna play with some color, especially 
especially this time of year, I just think this color selection is so perfect. In this palette, you don't have a lot of those bright oranges and reds and yellows. You have a couple of shades like that, but the majority of it is just a little bit more subtle. And Profusion's formula when it comes to the matte shades isn't super pigmented, so I feel like even the ones that look a little brighter in the pan don't go on your eyes quite that bright. What I especially love about this one is the beautiful selection of greens that it has, and it also gives you some neutral options to work with as well. There are some cream shadows in here that are just out of this world gorgeous. This one up here, Harvest Moon, and this one, Thankful, are some of my most used shades. You can probably see the big dent that's in them. I also love the shimmer shades Communal and Grassland right here, and this Marigold shade is also stunning. So unlike the Tarte Man Eater After Dark, this one actually has a ton of shimmer shades that I reach for when I'm creating looks with this palette, and it also has some really beautiful crease and transition colors that work for my skin tone, as well as some mid-tone shades and some deeper shades. So it really, again, has it all, and it's like a $10 palette, but I just love the way that my looks come out with this one every single time, and it lets me play with a little bit of color without going totally overboard. So this is another huge favorite. Number four on my list is the one that I'm wearing in the video today, and that's the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes. So a lot of you probably could have guessed this one as well, because I've talked about it pretty often. If you're a fan of rosy-toned eyeshadows, like I am, then I think you would absolutely adore this palette. It's definitely more on the warmer tone side. It has some beautiful rich browns, but it also just has these gorgeous, warm pinks and rosy shades and everything just plays together so well. Every time I reach for this palette, I love the way the look comes out. You just don't have to think too hard no matter which colors you pick. I feel like they kind of all go together, which just makes my life so much easier. And I also love that the tone of these shadows doesn't make me look sick. Sometimes I can't wear certain types of pink or red eyeshadow because it looks like I'm coming down with a cold or something. But with these, I just feel like they're the perfect colors to make a warm fall look without orange and yellow and all of those typical colors that you find in more fall themed palettes. I think the rosiness is just really flattering, especially if you have blue eyes. The formula is also outstanding and you have so many different shimmer and matte shades to pick from, from light all the way to deep and in between. So Naughty Nude is definitely another palette that I reach for very often. Palette number five that gets a ton of love from me is another one from ColourPop and that's the Smoke and Roses palette. So this this one differs from the Stone Cold Fox in that it has some really beautiful softer pinks and purples. If I want to go for a little bit of color and not just do like a taupey or gray look like I can with the Stone Cold Fox, I love the different shades in here. And again, it is just so super versatile. You have so many shades to choose from that range from really light to mid-tone to deep. They all coordinate really beautifully with each other. And I've actually brought this palette with me on so many trips because because it has everything from your neutrals to those softer, beautiful pinks that I tend to wear a lot when I'm on vacation. It's just a really stunning palette with a beautiful formula. And it's funny because I used to reach for my smaller color pop palettes like That's Taupe and Going Coconuts. But since discovering these larger palettes, I really haven't reached for the small ones as much. I think it's kind of because these just have it all. So it's just easier to grab one palette and then come up with a look. I don't know. I hear from a lot of you guys though that the bigger palettes like this can be a little bit more overwhelming because you don't know what to choose. And I do actually have a video on my channel. It's a little bit of an older video, so hopefully the quality is okay. But in that, I actually go through one of these big ColourPop palettes. I think it's Bare Necessities. And I talk about the process of selecting shades and how I put eye looks together using a really large palette. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll just put it right here on the screen. And hopefully that'll be helpful for some of you guys who find larger palettes overwhelming. And that's everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun and informative. If you enjoyed it and you're not subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. And I want to thank all of you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.